Delays brought on by port congestion and a lack of laborers have increased consumer costs and hindered the global economic recovery. Even though the world is recovering from the economic decline brought about by the pandemic, experts still think that the supply chain crisis is expected to last for a long time. What's good, you guys? This is Market Thrive, and today, we're going to talk about how the supply chain crisis in the United States affect the slowdown in domestic production and what to expect in the future. Before we start the video, I would just like you to do me a favor by just hitting that subscribe button and the bell notification down below to keep you updated on this channel. So without further ado, let's hop into it. As congestion worsens, over 4 million containers are stranded outside of ports globally. That is the ideal recipe for even greater delivery costs as noted by analysts from the logistics firm RBC. They stated this in a report made public last week. Prices experience increased pressure when ships are scarce, regardless of whether this is because there are more ships lining up at a port or because there is actual demand, they noted. The researchers also emphasized that supply systems are currently experiencing the worst delivery delays in history. The turnaround time keeps going up, which causes more ships to become backed up outside of American ports. They continued by saying that given the fact that only approximately 15% of ships arrive on time, they anticipate freight prices to be high for a very long time. At least 300 container ships that departed from the port of Shanghai last month are on their way to the west coast of the United States. And according to the firm, some of these ships will be waiting for their babies for 111 days. Compared to the 37-day average from last year, that represents a significant increase. Port congestion is getting worse and spreading more widely. According to Michael Tran, head of Digital Intelligence Strategies at RBC, the myriad of issues is having a negative domino-like compounding effect across numerous markets. He underlined that expenses for containers had increased tenfold in the last 12 months, going from $3,000 to $30,000. The container shortage has been made worse by this year's shipping delays in China and Europe, which have also raised costs to previously unheard of heights. According to Josh Safran, head of the Plug and Play Tech Center at Rogers, RBC insurance firms have increased the price of protection coverage for ships in the Black Sea as a result of Russian action against Ukraine. The increased insurance premiums range from 1 to 5 of the ship's worth. Previously, there were only 0.25% of conflicts. Moreover, RBC claimed that operators are passing on higher expenses to customers as fuel supplies have fallen to their lowest point since 2007 and prices have risen to record highs. Analysts stated in a different research made public by Morgan Stanley on Monday that they do not anticipate capacity expansions until late 2023. They estimate that this summer, container prices on the spot market could go as high as $47,000, describing how manpower shortages in the transportation business will raise costs and cause further delays. Industry insiders recently told Bloomberg that despite eventual reductions in port congestion, long-term supply chain issues will still exist. The system now has far too many choke points, and none of them can be resolved overnight. The flow of ships and containers will start to slow as a global recession gets underway, but conditions on global supply chains will never be the same, according to Tim Schwarth, CEO of logistics behemoth DHL's global forwarding freight division. Quote, I don't think we're going to back to this overcapacity situation where rates were very low. Infrastructure, especially in the US, is not going to get any better anytime soon because infrastructure developments take a long time, he said. In a similar note, Logistics experts Sherry Schiffling and Nicolas Valentesis Canelos argued that even in the best-case scenario, a situation in which the Ukraine crisis is resolved and there are no more lockdowns in China, supply chains will undoubtedly be under significant strain for some time to come. Up to mid-2023, 88% of businesses are preparing for significant disruptions according to a recent study of CEOs and corporate executives. Supply chain issues are about to have a bullwhip effect now that there are developing imbalances in the U.S. economy. 
As explained by Freight Wave CEO Craig Fuller, quote, the bulwark effect is a term used in supply chain circles to describe a scenario in which temporary surges in retail demand are magnified and exaggerated by upstream manufacturers and suppliers who rapidly increase production well beyond the level that can be supported by consumers. Eventually, retailers find themselves with more inventory than they can sell and what's stated as goods shortage ends up as a goods surplus, end quote, Fuller wrote. American consumers are extremely anxious about the condition of the economy and their own financial security, despite the fact that job rates have increased. Consumer confidence is suffering significantly as a result of record inflation, collapsing stock markets, rising interest rates, and mounting economic and financial instability. The customer backlash couldn't happen for supply networks. As businesses struggle to recover from the pandemic economy, the bullwhip effect has caused a tremendous overstock of inventories and has wreaked havoc on global supply networks. The retail electronics, furniture, clothes, and appliance industries, which have all reported significant supply cuts, account for a whopping 77% of container imports into the United States. Until inventories are reduced to normal levels, freight waves anticipates further weakness, Fuller cautions. This indicates that a significant manufacturing slowdown is already underway as the supply and demand gap persists. At the same time, as stores stock up on back-to-school and holiday goods, the largest hubs in the United States, Los Angeles and Long Beach in Southern California, are dealing with a record surge of cargo. But at the same time that this is taking place, Hundreds of dock worker contracts around the West Coast have expired, and U.S. railroads and warehouses are still congested. Facilities in Southern California now have a vacancy rate of about 0.3%. At a virtual meeting of Harbor Commissioners last week, Port of Los Angeles Executive Director Gene Soroka noted that the scarcity is particularly severe in the Inland Empire counties of Riverside and San Bernardino. Quote, During normal times, the vacancy rate stood as high as 15%, he said. We can't build these facilities fast enough and even though we boast 2 billion square feet from the shores of the Pacific, now out to the desert region of Southern California, we've got to turn that cargo out faster and have enough space under the roof to manage all of these consumer and manufacturing products, end quote, he stressed earlier this month. Since February, the number of empty containers has more than tripled, causing dock space to become congested. On the ground as of Monday, there were around 20,000 train container units. For at least two weeks, around two-thirds of them had been waiting to be picked up. All of this indicates that the interruptions we'll see over the next few weeks and months will be much more severe than the majority of the general public is aware of. Prior to 2020, most Americans thought that the phenomena of product shortages was a problem that only foreign countries had to deal with and that they would never experience it in their lifetime. But things have changed really quickly. The shortages that we've been experiencing coincide with a period of record inflation. But in reality, the price increases haven't yet reached their peak. Since many people have changed their spending patterns as a result of the high cost of basic necessities, there is now more demand for affordable goods as well as higher levels of supermarket shopping. More customers say they shun brands and only purchase what they really need as each month goes by. According to a survey conducted in June by the Real Financial Progress Index, 42% of Americans are altering their grocery shopping habits. The effects of rising prices on consumers' monthly budgets have been reported. Supply chain problems, however, have an effect on costs beyond those at the grocery store. In a report released on Tuesday, a number of American power firms warned that rising energy costs are imminent owing to supply problems that are limiting their capacity to maintain the lights as the nation enters the height of summer and hurricane season. This summer, consumer energy demand is anticipated to reach a record high placing strain on the nation's electric infrastructure at a time when government organizations are alerting the public that rolling blackouts may be caused by the weather. Supply issues for equipment, which might make it more difficult to restore power during outages and drive prices even higher, are being warned about by power firms. As a result of the closure of numerous coal facilities in recent years and the severe drought that has reduced hydropower supplies in many western states, they are also having difficulty restocking natural gas stocks for the upcoming winter. Millions of shoppers are already scrambling to stock up at this time. 
While some claim to have never seen empty shelves as a source of worry, others think that what we have experienced thus far is only the beginning. Many customers hurry to hoard goods at home before they vanish from stores once more as a result of the vicious cycle of high pricing and empty shelves. This is a trend that will probably intensify during the coming months. Some food staples are already being rationed in some areas. Due to supply issues, several shops have begun restricting items like wheat, sunflower oil, sugar, corn, eggs, milk, dairy products, cleaning supplies, and canned goods according to the National Herald. The quantity of products that can be sold in stores will now be temporarily limited. Although the majority of rationing cases to date have been in European nations, it was only a matter of time until it began to occur in the United States. The fact that this has happened is just another sign that the time has passed and the world has become completely mad. Although there are still some areas of the nation that are experiencing the calm before the storm right now, it is obvious that this situation won't last for very long. What do you think about it? Feel free to jot down your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like. And if you want to stay updated on our posts, hit that subscribe button as well. Once again, this is Market Drive, signing off.